I'm so excited to bring this video to you. It's a new twist on the Nimitz Tic Tac fast moving UFOs or unmanned aerial vehicles that the Navy reported. And it's really good. <laughs> And it came from you, the viewers. So I get lots of comments, I read through them every day, and now and again you get this, hey professor, look at this type of comment, and that's what I got. This guy wrote, and what he said immediately jumped out of the page as real, and likely, and secret. So I'm going to start with a story, and the story is this. Who amongst us have, at the end of the workday, gone down the pub with your mates from a specific industry and sat around before you go home to your lovely wife and tell funny stories about what happened in your narrow field that day and laugh about them? We all do. Hey, did you see what happened to the lathe? Ho, 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 that really got Bob annoyed. You know, it's, you kind of maybe overhear these conversations from another group working in a different industry somewhere in the pub. Well, what this guy told me started off with a pub story. A group of people in England were sitting in a pub with the person who wrote to me and were absolutely having a belly laugh about the Tic Tac Nimitz unidentified aerial vehicles, the UFOs that have been everywhere. And they thought it was very funny for a good reason. And that reason is they're OOP people. OOP people? I literally had to Google OOP and got wonderful other things until I hit on what OOP really means in the context of the pub conversation. OOP is Object Orientated Programming. It's used in gaming, in virtual reality. It's a very high level, sophisticated type of computer programming that's also used by the military. And this really isn't my field. I have to read this to you about what OOP, Object Orientated Program, really is. Listen to this and be amazed. The behavioral subtyping is undecipherable in general, and the class of object hierarchies must be carefully designed considering possible incorrect use that cannot be detected semantically, and this issue is known as the Liskov substitution program. Oh my god, I can't even program my computer. Never mind understand what they are talking about. But what they're talking about changes the world. Because who they were, were a group of lads and lasses who work for a large, well-known British defence contractor, beginning with the letter K. I guess you know who I mean. And they write this stuff. That's 
how the military train today. Gone is this stuff. We're no longer in a red hat, black hat, MiGs versus Tomcats. That's old hat. The Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Coast Guard, whoever, train using virtual battlefield reality. So let's go back to the UFOs and remember this interview. And we were getting ready to do an ADEX, an air defense exercise, uh, which is really high fidelity type training where you're trying to defend a strike group against incoming um, aircraft or incoming missiles. And it's it's an exercise, a combat exercise. It, it's all done safely. There's no right. weapons and it's all, it's all simulated, but it's very high fidelity training and really, really good training. We call it an ADEX. So this guy was there. He was one of the senior radar operators and he describes weird objects appearing on his screens. The problem was about around right on the 10th of November, I started to observe these anomalous air contacts coming off the coast. Of, uh, they came in my radar envelope right around uh, Catalina Island, right, right. which was, was to the north of us about 100 miles or 150 miles or so. And the weird thing about them, they were appearing in groups of between five and 10 in formation and there were 28,000 feet going 100 knots. UFOs, UAVs, all over the place. And as you know, he scheduled an F-18 to go and look for the objects, and yet they found them on their radar screens. These weird objects that would appear out of nowhere do unbelievable anti-Newtonian physics dropping out the sky from 28,000 feet to the deck and flying at 100 knots. These broke all the laws of physics. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? Yeah. These were during a training exercise. This was a Navy military training exercise. And how do military do training? With OOP virtual reality. The software takes over the entire battlefield. Every plane, every radar screen, everything can be augmented with foes, with fake MiGs flying everywhere. And the real aircraft can go up, see them on their radar screen and go and find them. And in the MOA, military operational area, MOA, they can fire live ammunition and they can hunt them down virtually. So in the pub in England, these people working for a large British defense contractor writing virtual reality battlefield software, wrote to me and said, the Tic Tac and the other UFOs were reskinned. That's a computer term, I believe. Virtual reality battlefield training scenarios. Now, I really don't know if that's true, but I think it adds a new twist to this old potato because let's go over some of the things that I've said and other people have said about the UAVs, the Tic Tac, the fast mover, the whole Nimitz thing. Number one, it all took place in a military exercise. Oh, number two, did they actually see them with their eyes? Please answer in the comments below because the only video I've seen is on their forward-looking infrared and radar scopes. I've never actually seen 
one of these objects. A video feed of a HUD, a head-up display, with a virtual UFO. What does that mean? It's part of the battlefield training exercise. Hey, so that was me in the past, and this is me in the present. So what I do is I show these films, first of all, to my Patreon supporters who are extremely polite and extremely knowledgeable. And they've made some pretty good points about the film that you've just seen. So I thought I would add them now to you, the YouTube audience at the end, to clarify what really happened. So first of all, they point out that OOP software has been around for a long time. And these guys weren't necessarily working on OPP software. They were just using it to write virtual reality. And the second and really great point is, okay, maybe radars can have extra targets added to them, but forward-looking infrared? Can it? You know? I mean, it is just a head-up display that the pilot sees, and it would have to track the object in relationship to the airplane. I really don't think, I think it would be really hard to make forward-looking infrared to have a real-time 3D signature back to the plane. So that means that they did see a physical object and it wasn't just a piece of virtual reality simulation software. Plus a Navy person pointed out a very good point that what happened was extremely dangerous and probably wouldn't happen in his Navy because it would risk lives to go chasing after a virtual UFO that probably would have been pulled by somebody in the command chain who actually knew what was going on. So I think they were probably real objects. And because we don't really know what these things were, I think it is a viable explanation, but I think it has holes blasted through it. And they deleted all their comments from YouTube. So what's really going on? I don't know. I guess the truth is still out there. Mm -hmm.